Hey, what is up guys? It is your boy Speed here and today we're gonna be looking at one of my DPC games. If you guys didn't know, very exciting. I've made it to the closed qualifiers of uh, the DPC season, Division 1. We'll see how we can do. We'll see. That could be very exciting. Who knows how far we can go. Hopefully very far. But nonetheless, in today's video, we will be looking at a nursery game I played. I had a very, very good game. This is probably my hardest stomp out of all the games in the series. I thought I played very well. I put the right pressure on the map. My landing stage was probably a little bit questionable, which I'll dive into. But nonetheless, let's hop into it. So the first thing I want to cover is when we actually picked my hero. I'm not going to go over the entire draft. I'll save that for the website. On the website, I'm probably going to do three to five drafting videos, as well as a bunch of other courses on my DPC games. But nonetheless, let's hop into it. So right here, we have our pretty standard heroes. We like to pick uh, Spirit Breaker and then like ranged off leaners. That's just kind of like the vibe we like to run. Honestly, this team, we just came together last minute. We're picking the heroes that we want. Not really mine, though. Uh, for the safe laner, you know, and I'm playing safe lane, you really got to pick, you know, based on your matchup. So we go for the Oracle here. That was encounter to the Warlock. They go for a Legion, I believe. They go for a Legion, and, um, oh wait, no, this is where we go Ricky. So we decided to pick Ricky mid. We wanted to keep it open, keep our draft open so far. Then we had the next pick, and so we were thinking about our pick for a little bit here. We were debating between two heroes. We were deb debating between Troll, which we felt like might get a little bit kited, all right? There's the Coil, Clockwork builds like Force Staff and Ghost Scepter, and then Legion Purge. I mean, it could get kited. The landing stage is still pretty good against Legion, though, right? That That landing stage can be quite good and so that's why we were considering the troll as well it's also just a very solid hero with oracle in lane however we decided to go for the ursa i'm a little bit more comfortable on ursa i would say it yeah i'm a little bit more comfortable on ursa so we decided to go for the ursa it's a very standard pick against the legion and honestly like that's the only reason why we picked it i said that i think i could carry the game i'm like hey i'm gonna go battle fury build right we have this this ricky who's gonna be our space creating mid i'm like yeah i'll go battle fury i'll carry the game so we did need a you know a, a hard carry hero that can scale but ursa i think a lot of people still look at ursa as this like oh lane dominator nothing you know if you don't win the lane you're gg that's not really the case you do want to pick ursa with good lanes but it's not the case it's not like oh you just lose it's gg that's i, I don't think that's the case at all but nonetheless let's get into the game by the way, before we do, smash the like button, subscribe, and if you want to qualify to close DPC events in the future, you know what you gotta do? You gotta subscribe to Game Leap. I mean, that's the only reason I was able to make it, because I watch all the Game Leap videos, and so all of a sudden, I'm qualified for the close qualifier of DPC Division 1. That's all you have to do, and you're basically guaranteed a slot. You'll probably even just get a direct invite. All right, nonetheless, before we get into the laning stage, I know, I know, I, it's like the 18th thing. I just want to say a very special shout out to Autumn Leaves. He's our coach for this event, and he did a fantastic job at directing us to victory. So shout out to Autumn. We can't thank you enough. Okay, now actually get into the game. So right here, you might be seeing that I have a stick, and you're probably saying, Speed, why do you have a stick? We were originally going to aggro tri-lane, and then because we're a team that hasn't scrimmed before, we decided 10 seconds before the game, you heard that right? Uh, 10 seconds before the game, we decided that we're going to swap the lanes and we're actually going to keep it normal. We're going to lane the Ursa against the Legion. The reason why we were going to aggro is we were a little bit concerned about putting the Venno bottom. He ended up crushing anyway. Also, we like Oracle against Warlock because you can purge the heal, which is like cool. But we decided to say, eh, nah, whatever, just leave the Venno bottom. He'll do well against PA or he should do pretty well against PA. Uh, I wasn't too sure, but nonetheless, let's get into the lane. This is where I think a lot of people would throw the game, especially against like a top tier Legion player, and I threw it here as well. This is a bad play on my part. So right here, I'm like, oh, I'll secure the range creep right off the bat, but in all reality, I, it's very hard for me to do that. Keep in mind, guys, Ursa is not that good at level one. Fury Swipes is incredibly underwhelming. It's just not that good. And so a lot of people are like, oh, you know, Ursa's supposed to crush Legion. Later on, I do, and I will. But at level 1, I actually even think I make the same mistake here. I'm like, yeah, I'm Ursa, I'm just gonna hit this guy. And that's kind of what I do, I do hit him, and it's not a terrible trade, but you can see it's really not that good, because to hit this guy, I have to aggro the wave, right? So, all in all, I tried to put a lot of pressure, I'm running at him very hard, but in turn, I have this stick, which is completely useless for trading, right? And then I immediately have to ship out more regens. So the main tip here is if you're playing Ursa, Make sure you don't just like YOLO on people like that. It's not good at level one. Wait for wait for your level three. You'll do much better. And funny enough, I'm skimming ahead here, but it, it's important to note that I almost felt like I was losing the lane. Like literally, I felt like I was losing the lane. And as I said, it's sort of to be expected. Part of me even wish I took my W next. 
The reason why I say that is the W is only 30 mana at level 1 now. That's a crazy, right? The spell's insane. It's only 30 mana for 3 extra attacks, right? And so I can take that and then I can actually trade with the Legion well. But I went for my Q to sort of like chase her down. But the thing is, I never could really chase her down because I would hop on her. Like right here, I was like, oh, you know, I'll just hit her. I nearly died. I was like, what the? I had to disengage. So as you can see, thank God my, my uh, support had a salve. I'll bind with Zebra on the case. But the thing is, you have to be very careful and understand that just because your hero counters a hero in general, you have to know when that actually means. And I see a lot of examples like this. It's like Timber players. They'll die level one overplaying their hand. Or Bat Riders will die. Or Bristlebacks will just play like they have, you know, level 25, a Bloodstone and Eternal Shroud. And they, they saw the Thompson clip, like, you know, and then, and then they just feed. So make sure you understand when you actually win your lane. And don't overplay your hand until then. It, it sounds maybe basic. It's like, oh, just wait till you're strong. But that's like one of the hardest things to learn in Dota. And make sure you're paying close attention to it. Don't just say like, oh, Ursa, good Legion. So next, let's get into some advanced carry decisions. Right here, I see my Legion is cutting the wave. And I have a couple options. I could run at her. We do have a Spirit Breaker. Maybe we can make that work. But at the same time, I'm going to miss full Creep Waves on her tower. The kill will give me less gold than the Creep Wave I'm going to miss. So instead, what do I do? I take this Creep Wave. And I'm going to drag it to the large camp. This is very important. Anytime someone is creep cutting against you, you want to drag your creep wave over to the large camp and it allows you to farm both. Even though I end up missing a couple CS here, it's obviously just very good for efficiency. I missed both of those. That was so sad. Um, but it's very good for efficiency and I get a free large camp at least worth of XP. So don't forget that tip. Then here, this guy ran up. So at this point in the lane, I just want to chase him down. You're going to notice I definitely don't pounce right away, right? I'm saving my earth shock until he's out of attack range. Right? A lot of people mess this up. It's like Slark. People would, a lot of people would pounce in right away. No, you only want to pounce and you only want to use your mobility spells when they're out of attack range, especially if they're, you know, away from their tower, right? Let's say he was here. Maybe I would pounce, but he's not. So I save it. I save it. I save it. Okay. He's out of range. I pounce. Now we don't get the kill. Legion's obviously very tanky, but we get a lot of good pressure in. And so, yeah, I think a lot of people would look at this lane. They say it's a disaster. It's like, oh, you're losing to Legion. At this point, I'm, I'm definitely not. Her CS started to fall off once I got my levels, right? Just my my presence of kicking her out of the lane gets to the point where she actually just loses a lot of CS. And honestly, that's good enough. Like, keep that a, keep that as one of your perspectives. Guys, it's okay if you don't, like, stomp your lane if you kick them off the CS, which is an important concept as any hero because let's say you're playing Slark and you're like, oh, but I want to build Permagi. It's not nearly as important as just getting a lot of CS and zoning people off the wave. It's just not, so keep that in mind. Next up here, I had two options. I, I, I was considering going Falcon Blade. I really like Falcon Blade and Ursa. I think the damage is nice. The HP lets you fight. The mana regen is fantastic. However, 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 I wanted to go Battle Fury right away this game. I felt like, okay, I don't want to fight too much. That's what my team is meant to do. And I'm going to hit a lot of creeps. So that was basically my goal, right? I'm going to hit a lot, a lot of creeps and I'm going to get farmed. So that's what I go for. I go for the Void Stone right away. I'm like, hmm, I might jungle. So I'll pick up that Void Stone. Next up here, a fight breaks out. Let's see how I play it. The first thing to note is that my Ricky is TPing in. Why is this important? Well, Ricky is TPing in. I'm listening to my teammates. I'm like, oh, I can turn. I can bait. I want to set up. However, I don't want to make it too obvious that some guy's TPing. If I turn right here, the enemy will know. They're going to be like, oh, okay. There's no way he would man up into three heroes unless support is coming in. So I continue to disengage. I eat my Tango, right? Want to get that regen kicked in, even though I'm almost full HP, right? Get that regen kicked in. And then I hop on this puck. I know I'm not going to kill him. I just want to do some damage for later on. You'll see that pays off. Then I'm going to go on to the clock. I decided, okay, he's going to get away. And so after these cogs, I actually just act like I'm running back to the creep wave. You might be saying, oh, but Ricky's here. Shouldn't you chase? Same concept as before. If I chase here, they're, they're going to know. They're going to say, oh, what, what is he doing? There's a wave under his tower. So instead I back up. They're like, oh, versus backing up. Okay. They don't want to fight. However, I, I wanted to fight, right? So I go back in. I pop my W. I pounce on the puck here. I had my fury swipes from earlier. And he just dies, ends up dying to my Ricky. So that was a huge kill for us, obviously. And uh, so, yeah, that was honestly one of the best parts of the game. I felt, you know, they they set up a gank and it actually goes in our favor at the end. So uh, props to my Ricky, good TP. And I thought my baiting there was quite good. Next up, I'm not looking to rotate this game. It's very important to stick to your, you know, your plan. My plan in this game was to scale, hit a lot of items. And while doing that, what Ursa is really good at doing is just kicking people out of the lane. A lot of heroes are like this. Whenever you get a good lead, if you can, keep this in mind, if you can, you really want to go on the other person. So obviously I can go on PA. I don't know why he hit me here. I was like, what are you doing? Like, Ray, you want to, you want to man up to me? I think he wanted to bait. And this is really funny. I end up going again on him here. I pop my phase boots and then, oh, I get clipped by a rock. I'm like, oh my God, I'm committing whatever. So I'm getting chased here. 
I hit this guy with my last two Fury Swipes. I pounce on him. He lives on one HP. I'm like, ah! <laughs> I end up feeding, but uh, honestly, that wasn't too bad. I did drop two heroes to like low HP, but we kind of chain fed. You could tell because my um my Veno took the tower, it ends up being like technically a net worth win, but I honestly, I'm happy with that play. And you might be saying, see guys, you shouldn't make those type of plays. You're going to feed like speed. You should play safe. You say you never to dive towers. Well, if I think I can kill the enemy carry, and it, it was very close, obviously. If I can think I can kill him and make a big play, I'm going to make the big play. Those are the type of plays that you, you you really learn from. Like, interacting with enemy heroes and making stupid plays is one of the best ways, or dangerous plays, to learn Dota. And then I end up getting tipped here. Like, I mean, so we hit him with the sub the game leap in the all chat, obviously, you know. Anytime you get flamed, you, you just want to type sub the game leap in the all chat. And at this point, it was kind of just rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. I know it seems basic, but like... Guys, sometimes people try to do way, 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 way too much and they throw their games. Like, literally, people are, like, playing troll or, like, AM with Battlefield and they're just, like, showing up to, like, bottom fights. I'm like, hello, just hit your timings, you know? And so that's what I do here. I'm getting gone on. I don't know why this guy was going on me. I guess he's probably sort of the Oracle. He's like, oh, shoot. But I do, like, half of his HP, which is great. And then look at this charge. Oh, my God. The charge of a lifetime. We're able to nearly... Oh, no, I burst that guy right away. Whew. We get the double kill. That was huge. All of a sudden, I'm going to get like a 14 minute Battle Fury. And sometimes that's a, like a great way to play. If you're having a good lane, keep this in mind. If you're having a good lane, what you can do is you can bring the fights to yourself. If you sit in lane and you apply aggression to whoever TP's in, the fights will come to you a lot of the time. Not always, but a lot of the time they'll come to you. And if they don't come to you, what ends up happening? You're just going to get free farm. So in my opinion, this is a great way to play when you have the advantage. Now, once I get my battle fury, you can see I immediately switch my attention for efficiency sake. It's a very important thing when it comes to farming patterns to say, okay, I have battle fury. I'm going to immediately go to the ancients, right? Previous to battle fury, I could farm ancients and I could play the bottom side of the map. It wouldn't be bad, uh, but my Venom was kind of chilling there. He was playing his game, so I don't mind staying top. Even if it's maybe not the best in terms of efficiency, I still think it's fine, right? I have, you know, another greedy hero in the Venom, so... I'll play that game. But now I can just shift to the bottom side of the map. I'm constantly looking at the mini map. Basically, right now I'm just playing a mini game of how fast can I farm creeps? And number two, how can I avoid dying? So I just got to stare at the map, say, okay. Because they they do have kill throat. I mean, they have a lot of catch, right? They have duel, they have hookshot, coil. But I do have to be careful, even though I do feel strong. But yeah, once I got my battle fear, you can see I'm full farm mode. And I, I think a lot of people would never play Ursa like this because they just don't see it. Ursa as one of these heroes. But my team prepped some stacks for me, which is awesome, right? So we get the stacks prepped. I farm it up, I farm it up, I farm it up. Um, and yeah, I just kind of continue to do that. We sometimes decide as a team, like, hey, guys, we don't need to do anything crazy, right? We don't need to go in. We don't need to make plays. We're outscaling them. PA had a bad start, right? And this is where people... Got, this is probably going to be the biggest message you could learn from any of my videos. People assume when they have leads that they have to keep putting pressure, that they have to keep playing the map aggressively, because if they don't, the enemy will come back. They'll get items. But what they don't understand is that if you had a good start, or what they don't think about, if you had a good start and you get the items first, the farming items first, you will outfarm them and you'll hit your next timing faster as well, right? You, you will continue to outfarm them as long as you continue farming, right? And yes, there are still cases where you need to run at them. Let's say I'm against an elk. Maybe I would be more pressured to do that. But even that actually, not even, that's not even true. Even if I was against an elk, I'd probably make the same play because I'm going Battle Fury and I'm going to play around the Battle Fury. Like I'm, I'm just going to farm. And so that's my game plan, I, and I'm fine with sticking to it. Even though I'm far away from my team here, I don't mind doing this. I know we're ahead as well, and because we're ahead, my team can play very far up, and it's not, you know, it's not really the end of the world. Unfortunately, nothing ended up happening here, but you can see I don't mind showing up to fights late because my team is doing well. And let's say they were feeding, and I felt like I can't fight yet, then I wouldn't show up anyway. I want to show up to fights that I think are good. Now, upcoming here, I, I end up TPing out after this fight, and my team actually had a bit of a, a disagreement. I, I felt here that, you know, my, my thought process is, okay, the fight ended, Right? Maybe we can take Roche. I guess maybe that's a thing, but the fight ended. I just want to continue farming. Like, like nothing's going to happen, and we don't really need to take over their, their side of the map. However, they wanted to take over the map, and I should respect that idea, or I, I should at least consider it. And I just kind of snap TP'd, and then they get gone on, right? So they get gone on. The enemy team obviously sees me bottom, and this is why I, I tell you guys in videos if you TP out as a carry, you have to be very careful and tell your team to back. Otherwise, they're going to feed, right? And I didn't tell them to back here. I kind of just snap TP'd and they end up going down, right? At least the Ricky does. Oh yeah, I think they charge in and feed a couple of kills as well. However, honestly, it's still not that bad for the net worth. As I said, I I'm, I'm still just playing my game, continuing to snowball, continuing to hit my timings. I'm really not too worried about the PA because look, right? Look, she's having a bad game. So she's only getting her deso like now. She's still like 2k behind me. And so even if she goes in, 
Yeah. I mean, maybe I could be a bit worried about it, but it's not like it's not something I'm freaking out about. Then after we got a couple of pickoffs, we ended up going for Roche. Um, and at this point, I'm kind of just looking to put map pressure now, right? I've hit my timings. And so at this point, yes, I do want to start playing the map aggressively. I feel very strong. I have that Aegis, and so I should be using it to take over the map. So now we want to really like shut down the enemy team, right? And here I'm like, oh, I want to TB bottom again. Now in this case, we talked about it, right? We talked about my issues of uh, the last situation. My team fed three kills or they died after I left them. So I'm like, hey guys, I'm going bottom. Now look at their movements. And you might be saying, oh, but speed, these are all high more players. They get this. You just like, yes, that is true. It's easier for me to do it. But in pubs, I've had this happen millions of times. I will tell them, hey guys, I'm backing. I need you to back. Sometimes they won't do it. Sometimes they won't, but I, I find that a lot of the time, if you're saying things in a friendly way and you say, hey, I'm backing, I really need to farm my next item, they'll understand and they'll back up. Now, at this point in the game, I'm going Rambo. I know I need to lead for my team, and so I'm making it a, a mission. I'm making it my mission statement to run in and be the front line no matter what. So I end up finding this Warlock here, very convenient pick off. I get that kill right away, and it's a great fight. They end up having to duel a Spirit Breaker, which is obviously not optimal. I get a huge cleave, killing off the clock, almost a Legion as well. And now the game is a disaster. So when, notice what we did. We got Aegis. I push in some waves. I, I make the team, enemy team feel comfortable, right? Okay. I make them feel comfortable. They're like, ah, you know, they're not making any plays. They're just going to farm at this Aegis. No. Then when they, they get comfortable, we go and we pounce. We go and we kill. I go frontline. I make sure I'm the first one seen. So if anyone gets jumped, it's me. And they'll waste all their spells on an Aegis, right? And that's a very, very key concept of why Aegis is broken. If you use it properly and you don't just YOLO down a high ground, you'll do well. Guys, ask yourself this question. If you're playing Ursa, can you siege high ground this game? The answer is, well, maybe their, their D push isn't actually that good. It's definitely not. But it, it, it's decent, right? I can get Fatal Bonded, Rocket Flared, uh, Overwhelming Odd, whatever it is. I can get all these spells casted on me. And so I need to, you know, I need to instead go for pickoffs. How do you do that? Back up, right? When you have the Aegis, how do you get to pick off the enemy team? Back up, farm, just chill. Wait for the enemy team to leave. Then when they leave, smoke and kill them. It works so consistently. If it works against top, like whatever, 100 players, right? These guys are top on. It's going to work in your pups. Okay. And so, yeah, now same thing here. You see me do this play a lot. I push out top side. They think I'm top and then I run bottom. Why? Because that's just how the Dota map works. So I run in. I find the Legion here. She instantly dies. I get double Warlock rocked. I decided to kill that off. I just actually ran out here. I was, I was like, oh God, am I going to die? Yeah, no, I'm not going to die. I'm very tanky. And we pick up another kill as well. On to the PA. It's a double kill for your boy Speed. And uh, yeah, this game at this point is getting completely out of control. The enemy team couldn't do anything to stop me. Uh, and this is why, yeah, sometimes if you just know it's a good game for your hero, you can play greedy. I knew it was a good Ursa game. I, I knew when I get this Sanch and Yasha, and, you know, considering my bottom lane one, I knew that I, I, I'll be able to pop off, right? I'll be able to get this Abyssal and I'll just insta-kill anyone I want. The enemy team doesn't really have saves either. They don't have like an Oracle or, you know, a Dazzle or anything like that. And so, so I knew I, you know, I was going to have a good game. And now the gameplay here is very simple. No Aegis, no high ground. No Aegis, no high ground. Even if I have Aegis, we still kind of need a pick off. You'll see we end up going high ground with Aegis, but I even had to play that slow. I had to play that careful. And you'll see that in a bit. So... Uh, we wanted to roast here, but I make this call. I think this is a good call. It's a very advanced play. We head into the pit. Obviously, they're going to contest. They know we're going to do it. We have an Ursa, right? We have an Ursa. It's that point of the game. They know we're going to do this. So what do I say? Okay, go into the pit, make them think we're roasting, and then smoke. Unfortunately, the rocket flare literally came in as we clicked smoke. So they saw it. Um, however, it doesn't matter because they don't know. Once the rocket flare vision ends, th they're going to have to panic and say, ah, they're probably in the Roche pit. However, we're not, right? They have to They have to worry. They they can't just like let us take ages. We're just going to do the same thing we did last time and crush them. But yeah, because of that, the clock is obviously staying in the area. He wants the rocket flare and then hook shot in and we kill him. We get that big pick off. He buys back. Um, and now we force the enemy team into a bad fight. Notice when they come in here. Oh my God, that charge <laughs> onto three. <laughs> uh, we I immediately am out of the pit. Do not commit to Roshan when they're coming. Go fight them. Do not get stuck in the pit. It's so bad. And then, yeah, we kind of just clapped them in this fight. Unfortunately, the PA ended up living with like one HP, but it don't matter. You think she's getting away? Nah. Next up, let's take a look at how I go high ground here. It's nothing too spectacular, but I think looking at the execution gives you a good idea of how high more players go high ground and 
and make their movements, make their siege. But I walk up here. I'm going to hit the tower. I took the level 25 talent. I thought this was a good decision. Even though the AoE shock is cool, it does slow everybody by so much in a huge AoE. I think the overpower attacks here is the way to go. I have to be the siege hero. And so you're going to notice I'm sieging and my team is not diving. Notice how when we see the PA, I don't just like run in and abyssal her. That's how you feed. Okay. That's how you feed. That's how you get kited out. So I'm going for the tower. I'm hitting, I'm hitting, I'm hitting, I'm hitting. I get the tower. Notice how I don't keep going. I'm not like, ah, oh, I have Aegis, so I'm just going to go kill myself. I have a heal hero. I'm going to back up. I'm going to let him heal me. And then I'm going to go back in. All right, and that's what I do. And I'm telling my team, I'm, I'm specifically telling, I remember saying it. I'm like, do not go in. They're just going to lose, right? It's up to them. They either just lose or they go in and we get to fight, right? We get to fight on our terms. I make them run to us. Then here, <laughs> uh, yeah, I have an MKB. So in this case, you might be saying, oh, you're diving. Well, I mean, it's, all right. I mean, I'm a little bit too far up here. Usually don't want to run through their high ground, but I was like, I don't know. I was feeling myself. I'm like, ah, forget. Then she's very far up, honestly. So I just go on her. I have an MKB and uh, yeah, my team YOLO's in, but she dies. And you notice I back right away, right? I don't keep going. That's a key thing. Like that's just intuition, you know, but you got to build that intuition as well. When you go for a kill on the high ground, whether or not you get it, you need to back, right? Instantly run backwards, kite them out. Then here I, I force them to run in. I catch them off guard. I blow up the Warlock, pop my W. Obviously this fight is completely over. We're just shredding him triple kill for your bar speed. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these videos on YouTube. I'm probably going to do one or two more. Hey, hopefully I qual for Div 1. If not, Div 2. If not, Div 5. We'll see. But nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll be making more of these videos definitely for the website. So go sub there and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. But yeah, that's going to be about all, folks. Remember, click the link down below and subscribe to the Game Leap website where we have thousands of videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.